Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and I'm back for another What Sold on Etsy video. I have not done one of these in a long time, it feels like, but I am back again to share with you a few things that sold in the month of June for me on Etsy. I just kind of have here a random list of items that I'm gonna go through and we'll show you right on the screen here, uh, but let's get right into it. I'm gonna go over what they sold for, how much I paid, if I can remember, the fees that were involved. Uh, well, what I'll say about the fees, I'm just gonna say 10% subtract that from the final sold price and that is the fees. And then of course you need to subtract how much I paid for the item cost of goods, but if I can remember that much, okay? But let's get started. All right, the first thing up is this really neat blanket. So it's this stadium style blanket, a really nice soft cotton or flan flannel type blanket and I don't remember how much I paid for this it could be as much as 10 or 15 dollars uh, I'm having a hard time with this particular blanket but it sold for a total of 54 dollars with free shipping and that's another thing currently everything in my shop is free shipping and that's just the way that I do it I have the shipping sort of bundled in in a way that I'm not losing money so it works for me but let's put that out there so the shipping uh, was probably about 10 bucks to keep it real. So I've been thinking about $10 for that, let's say $15 cost of goods. So we're in $25 on a $54 item. We know 10% fees of that, well that's about $5, 10% of 50. So, you know, what are we at? What are we left with? Is that 20 bucks or so? I don't know, it doesn't sound too great, does it? Well, I mean, all in all, I think it was better than this. Actually, I know it was better than this because this was a package deal. Uh, this particular buyer bought a lot of different things for me, so the shipping was less than like $10. So I think we're good on that one. But I'll flip through these pictures real quick. I have, this, I have the biggest struggle taking photos of fabric. Not that it's hard, it's just I have to set up a whole other area to do it because it takes a lot of space. So usually the entire table, dining room table. And then the lighting is never great. It's just always working against me. So yeah, let's go to the next one here. Now this is something I'm absolutely excited about. There are these, they these are some peacock aluminum tumblers. That's what they're called. That's how they were promoted and branded at the time. But they are very, very cool. And what makes them neat to me is for one, the rolled, aluminum texture to them. A lot of these aluminum cups weren't so textured like this and you can see in the way that the aluminum is just kind of has this extra texture to it. Um, so they are slightly different than like the standard aluminum tumblers we're all familiar with from the 60s but not only that these have this wonderful little coaster you can see it on the bottom there and then it has a liner. So here's the uh, little paper thing too. I paid up for these at an antique store. I think it was about $25 I paid for these, but I believed in them so much and they did take a while, maybe three months or so to sell, but they finally sold for $88 with free shipping. Uh, the shipping was like, you know, 10 bucks. So with that, I mean, I over doubled my money. So that's great. And I was happy to just get a hold of them and kind of work with them and, and have a part in selling and finding a new house for these home for these because they're beautiful love them the next thing up is really neat so these are blow mold ice cream cones another purchase i paid up for i'm sort of on this streak of pain whenever i see quality or unique items and that's just something i'm currently doing right now i don't know if i would recommend it or not if you have the capital to do it fine but uh, it's not necessary if you're a new seller, not by any means. I paid $10 for this. Didn't quite know how much it was gonna sell for. Uh, it ended up finally selling for $48 with free shipping. So the shipping on that was about 10 bucks. And because this came with its box, original box, that made it very simple for me to ship, I just wrapped it in, I believe, a, a layer of bubble wrap and then another layer of shipping paper. And you can buy that shipping paper at Walmart in the shipping aisle and it's relatively cheap. I think it's under $5 for a very good roll of it. Uh, so these are really cool plastic blow mold lights. You hang them along, say a patio, something like that. But they're just super cool. And here's the box I was mentioning. Um, just really awesome. Next thing up, 
Actually, these are two a pair of figurines and they're super fun. This one here has a little um, peanut, couldn't remember. And the next one here has a book. So again, I paid $10 a piece for these figurines. I believed in them. I knew I had, I knew inside they would find a home and they did. Um, they sold for $40 each with free shipping. These are tiny little guys. I mean, they're small enough that it can go free shipping, uh, first class shipping. Generally first class shipping is about $5. Uh, so I just kind of round that in. So, um, yeah, we're at $80 for two figurines. I pay $20 total. That's $60 minus cost of good. No, $60 minus fees and shipping. So, you know, that's really good. That's really good still. So I was happy with those and they're really cute and fun. And why I bought them, they were just so unique and I've never found anything like them. Cute. Oh, how did this get here? <laughs> so if you are a subscriber, a long time watcher, I did put out a magnet set. They are for sale, cheap plug. I know, sliding it in here. They are currently for sale, $14.95. You get the set of four magnets here. It comes with this little card in the back. It's like shaped like an old retro refrigerator right there, really fun. But I do have a good number of these available. $14.95, free shipping in the US. There we go, there we are. <laughs> Next up, we have the Schaefer ink pen. This is a really awesome find and I paid a dollar for it. So here's an example of not paying much for something, a dollar, and it sold for $38 with free shipping. This was another first class item. It did come with a box. So let me slide through real quickly to show you that. It's a walnut and it says so, solid walnut by Schaefer. And here's the box, there we are. I wrapped it in bubble wrap and then wrapped that box in craft paper, shipping craft paper. And that's all it took. And it went first class under a pound. Really awesome. Oh, yeah, right, okay. $38 it sold for, I paid a dollar. What else? I don't know, $5 shipping. Yeah, there's your fees. I don't know, I mean. <laughs> I wanted to include this because I guess we didn't have any real glassware to talk about. Um, so here we are. Uh, really pretty brown slag glass. This was a purchase that I did pay up for at an auction. I source at auctions, as you know, sometimes. And I paid $10 for the pair of these because they were interesting. And I wanted to have a little bit of experience with them. You know, there's some times whenever I'll just buy something just to have my hand at it and sort of have a, you know, try it out. And, uh, it's good to do that whenever you see the stuff, not after the fact and regret it. So I definitely jumped on these because they were brown glass. Not all that common to find brown glass for me. So I went ahead, I went ahead and bought them. And there was a few other brown glass pieces at that uh, auction and they were selling for pretty good prices. And uh, yeah, I was able to get these for a decent price. Let me slide through real quick. By the way, these are replacement tops to them. The uh, you know, the, the, the tops of the shakers. The glass is older, of course, but the tops have been replaced. That had that had something to do with why these took longer than usual to sell for, but uh, these did sell for $28, so not really that great. It did go um, first class shipping. They were under pound, so, and I paid $10, right? So that's, all of a sudden we're at about $20 at the very most cost in for all fees. So what did I walk away with? About $8. But at the very least, I had fun listing them and dealing with them, so that's great. Uh, next up, now this is interesting, and I've dealt with a lot of lunch boxes of these old 1940s, 50s, 60s lunch boxes. A lot of them are made by the Thermos brand. It, well, I'm not even gonna to begin to describe what that looks like. They're very synonymous, they're black. They look very similar to this, but what's interesting about the this one is the shape. And I'll show you that. You can see it really from the side here, the side profile, how interesting it looks. And because of that, I was able to sell this one for $48 with shipping included. Normally those other Aladdin, uh, no. Well, they're Aladdin thermoses sometimes, but the uh, Thermos brand lunchbox, the metal ones that are black usually sell for about 20 bucks, the common ones. This one's not common. 
So I was able to go pretty much double. And as you can see, it's from the 30s. It's written here. Uh, but really fun. Those are cool. I like that a lot. Uh, there was a logo on the bottom, wasn't there? I don't know. I saw something just now punched in the bottom inside there. I cannot read that. Well, whoops. Don't know. Okay, lastly, we're gonna end this end this video off with some Franciscan Ivy. Again, uh, and it kind of hints at it. So Franciscan Ivy is one of those patterns that is on my list of like favorite things. I got a list just like Oprah. Uh, favorite things by me. And it is the pattern that's used in I Love Lucy. So I'm like a, a moth to a flame. Is that, the, is that how they say that? Um, I buy Franciscan Ivy whenever I see it for a decent enough price that I know that I will not lose my shirt, basically. So how much I paid for this? Not sure. I know that I did okay in the moment of buying it. What this sold for, it's a butter dish, for $45 with free shipping. So one thing I'm, a fi I'm finding with a lot of the Franciscan Ivy is it's going to California, which does cut into my profits with the whole free shipping thing that I do. So that's not always too great. And I am sort of thinking about maybe not doing free shipping going forward, but it's kind of like I've been doing it for over a year now and it's been so great to me that I, I almost feel, well, you know, it's like a comfort thing. I'm so used to it. But before that, for a good year before that, I was doing uh, calculated shipping. So you pay, the buyer pays shipping based on what it is to get to their place. I'm essentially doing what Amazon does and these larger companies and kind of subsidizing the shipping by saying, okay, well, it's gonna be $8 for you. Mm, how do I describe this? I probably should do a whole separate video on on free shipping and how how I think that these large companies can do it. But it's kind of like, let's think about it this way. When you have an insurance plan, everybody pays money regardless if they use it or not. They pay a flat, smaller rate, but then all of a sudden, maybe you need to get like a $30,000 payout. Well, it was because, you know, a million people were paying a whole bunch of, you know, it adds up, it equalizes, it all balances out. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's how they do it, I believe, with Amazon. And how I, how I as a small seller look at it is, and especially being in the Midwest, it makes a big difference for me than others. But I can look at the shipping uh, based on the weight and the size of the box and get an a good idea of what it's gonna go for. It's either probably gonna be between $10 and $20, right, for this mysterious item. And I'll say to myself, well, if it's going for 10 to 20, I'll charge 15. Charge means I'll put that into the item. So the item is no longer a $20 item, it's a 20 plus 15, a $35 item. So now, if I sell it to that farther away person, I'm probably gonna lose a little money. Sure, if I sell it closer to me, I'm gonna make a little bit more money. But the trick is not to look at it on that one sale because that's where I think a lot of people like get freaked out. You have to look at it over a whole bunch of sales because eventually, and over the court, just averaging things out, you're going to find that you're selling things to California, things to the next state, state over, things to Texas, things. And whenever you look at all this, it, it literally, for me, it balances out, right? So maybe I'm losing money here, maybe I'm ma making more money here, but it's just this, and I do have a separate video, I think, on why I chose to do free shipping, but uh, in the end, there is no wrong or right answer, especially, I would believe, when it pertains to one-of-a-kind items, items that are variable by weight, by distance, where they're going, by size, so there is not really a definitive answer, I can say. But, you know, I really got on a tangent there. I'm just saying, you gotta, you gotta find what works for you. I, I think there's nothing wrong, and I can't find one flaw in doing free shipping whenever you know for sure the shipping price. For instance, items that are under a pound. You know it's not gonna be anything more than $5 if you're willing to send them first class. Many sellers don't want to send things first class because of the insurance problems, you know, especially if you're on eBay. I think there's more fraudulent buyers on eBay. This is becoming a whole talk, I know. <laughs> but on Etsy, I'm a little bit more protected. Etsy sellers are pretty much 
protect like Etsy side. They have common sense thinking at Etsy. I know this is just what my thoughts are, but I and then I watched a lot of people get upset on eBay, talking to them on the phone, customer support. They'll change their oh dog, she's barking back. They'll change their what they you know. You talk to one person, they say something. You talk to another person, they're just they waver all over. They don't side with the seller oftentimes, even if you have a good record. So that's uh, now we're talking about why I prefer Etsy, aren't we? But I'm gonna I better in this video <laughs> while the dog's barking. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye bye.